All right, so our next task that we want to do is we want to start creating a sphere that will go around our planet. Now, to do that, I want to talk about a little bit of mathematics, nothing too crazy. All right, so if we look at our circle, or at our sphere, we could find that we already have some information about our sphere. We're trying to figure out what is the dot in the sphere, because we basically want to change the degrees, and as we change degrees to figure out what the x, y coordinates are of that specific dot. Now, to make that happen, basically we just need to know the length of this triangle that will give us our x, and we know, need to know the height of our triangle, or basically know the length of this line. So by knowing the length of this line and the length of this line, by getting a degree, we'll be able to know exactly what is the height of that triangle. Now, the way it works is this way. When I, when I use cosine, what does that actually mean? I basically, when I'm creating a cosine, I'm basically saying that a cosine is the adjacent, which is the, the line that is really next to a triangle in a right angle triangle, the line that's nearest to the angle that we're trying to discover, divided by the long, the long line. The long line, which in our case is our radius. So it's basically the cosine value is actually this invisible value, we don't know how much it is, divided by a value. In our case, we know what that value is. And that combination of two values together create the cosine, the value of the cosine. Now, contrary to that, the sine, the sine is basically the opposite, the opposite dot in the other side. The way that it's calculated, it's using the opposite divided by the hypotense that creates our sine. Now, in our scenario, if we wanted to try to figure out our dot here, when we're using the cosine, we're basically going to be able to figure out what is our adjacent. And when we figure out our adjacent, we're going to know where our x needs to be because it's going to give us the length of this line. On the other way around, when we're going to figure out the sine, we're going to figure out the length of our opposite because this is the invisible value that we don't know what it is. All right. So the cosine and sine, the cosine is going to, uh, the cosine and sine are going to help us figure out how we want to position things. Now, lucky for us, because a circle, but just by its nature, is kind of like a perfect shape. It doesn't really matter that much if we use sine or cosine because they're interchangeable almost unless it's important to us to get the specific real angle. In our scenario, it's not as important. So without further ado, let's check it out and see how it actually works. So I'm going to go into our code again. And in our code, I want to create a new sphere. So I'm going to go right ahead and it's going to get it's going to start to get getting a little bit messy so i wonder if we could try to take advantage of our update globe but i'm not going to do it here because i'm going to leave that for you as homework and instead of that i'm going to just add more code onto this so let, let me just start adding code i'm not going to even give it good names i'm just going to call it another private variable i'm going to call it shape 2 it's going to be a type of shape now shape 2 is going to be very similar to shape 1 only we're not going to use the update globe because if we use the update globe, we will need to update the update globe to be able to use this new shape that we're creating. So I'm creating a new shape and I'm just going to quickly basically just create, go and create a sh shape two graphics. I'm going to just give it some sort of color. So I'm going to use the begin fill. I'm going to give it a color just randomly. The alpha is going to be 100%, and I'm going to go back to the shape 2 graphics, and I'm going to draw a circle. I'm going to position it at 0, 0, and I'm going to give it a radius of 5. So we're going to have a circle that its size in a whole would be probably text 10 pixels from one side to the other, and the radius will be 5. So let's just make sure that we close our shape. So we end our fill and now it's time to start positioning our triangle. So let's start off with just positioning it right after we updated our shape. So what I want to do is first of all, our shape is positioned in the center of the screen. So right after we position it, what I want to do is I want to go to shape two dot X position. And I want to tell shape two that your X position is going to be the shape dot X position plus the actual radius of that element which is probably going to be important because we want to make sure that we're bigger than the radius right now i'm just going to put this up so if our circle was 30 i want to put there a space of let's say of 15 so i'm going to put here uh, 45 which will basically give me a space of 10 pixels because our circle is five pixels radius 
Now I'm going to do the same thing for the Y itself before we start figuring out how to make it animate. And I'm going to set my Y position and I'm going to keep the whole thing exactly the same way. Now, basically, now we, the only thing missing is we didn't add our shape into the stage, so I'm going to do that right away. Oop. We're going to do an add child shape to. Now, if we run this, we're going to see that our element is sitting right here, but it's not moving, which is fine. Now, the next step that we want to do is enable it to start moving it around. Now, as you could probably know, this is the most extreme point. It's the most extreme point where it's basically the edge, edge of that. If we had a square here, it would be the edge of that square, but we created a bigger square, so it's even further out. The next step for us is we want to be able to change it. Now, when we change it, obviously, the values could only get smaller. This is the biggest value it could be, and then it would get the x and y coordinates would change in tandem. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the cosine and sine. Very, very simple. So let, let's see how it works. So basically, we're going to take the math.cosine. And we're going to tell, tell inside of it what degree we want it to be. So first of all, we want to make sure that we duplicate it by the real radius because the radius that our cosine is going to return is for a radius of 1. So in our cosine, we, we would love to just say, let's start from degree 0. Now, we can't use that directly as direct numbers because we have to use degrees. And we already created a calculation for the degrees up here. Remember, we took the math pi dot pi and divided it by 180. So we could take that math dot degree and start off with basically saying that we want to go to the, to the angle zero, basically for the cosine and position x, and we could do the same thing for y. Only instead of using cosine, we're going to use sine. Now, obviously, if we look at our sample right here, theoretically, really, we would want to use the sine for our x, because that would give us the right x position, and we probably want to use the cosine. Well, if, to you, if we use the cosine, we're going to get this length, which will give us the x. If we use the sine, we're going to get the height, which is going to give us the y. So cosine will probably be better for our x. So let's just make sure that we're using cosine for our x, and we are, and we're using sine for our y. Perfect. So now we should find ourselves in degree zero, which is perfect. We're exactly in zero. This is our zero position, and we want to progress from there, zero or 360. All right. So the next step is I want to add some sort of enter frame and basically have it grow each time the degree changes. So for that, I'm just going to create an enter frame. So I'm going to create here a nice enter frame on enter. I'm going to create another private function. And last but not least, we want to start updating the position. So I'm going to grab this sphere shape. And basically, we, we want to add a value of some sort each time. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to create a new variable, a new private variable. And I'm going to call it um, moon degree DGR. It's going to be a number. And let's start off from zero. And then we could adjust this moon degree by any way form we want. So let's say we want to add to that moon degree um, 3.2 degrees each time it moves. All that we have left really is two things. One is this number is going to grow and grow and grow. It's not going to bother Flash, but it bothers me. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that because a circle can't be bigger than 360 degrees, I'm going to go to that moon degree and I'm going to make sure that I'm going to mold to equal 360, making sure that a value can't be bigger than 360. As soon as it grows beyond 360, it will automatically be chopped down to the remainder of a division by 360. And that's all we really had to do to get our moon starting to roam around our Earth. Now, obviously, this could go in a lot of different directions, and it could become a lot more interesting than it is right now. And obviously, I encourage you to try to figure out ways to make it more interesting. Um, you could change it instead of having an enter frame coming more quickly. You could have it speed up more. I would give you homework if you choose to do some homework, because I would love for you to create a moon that has its own moon. And just have the spheres basically cycle among themselves and try to give the shapes a little bit of, of meat. You know, give them a little bit of a shine like our globe has. So that, that's all we have for this chapter. And we have just one more video left, um, which we'll cover immediately.